Hi Pisces, welcome to your April reading. Happy spring, happy new year, happy Easter. Happy Passover soon to everyone celebrating. We love you. Look at these beautiful flowers. Look at this beautiful weather. Okay. We have to talk about something Pisces. <laughs> I'm sorry. I know that when I start a reading that way, you're like, oh no, now what? It's just that I want to talk to you about this idea of value and how much you attach value to being attached to somebody or with somebody or not. Because there's so many other things that like need your focus and need your time. And, you know, especially in April, if you want to change jobs, it's the perfect time to change jobs and get into something long term that makes you really happy. You can start a project with friends that turns into a big deal financially. There's just so much luck when it comes to doing your own thing and making money that it's just a little bit concerning that you could fall into the trap of feeling bad that you're alone maybe or feeling bad that things aren't going the way you want in a relationship and so you just end up missing out on so many opportunities that are not related to love but also they do relate because it's about how much value you place in being attached to somebody and and being with someone like does that determine how you feel about yourself because if it does that's something that's going to get exacerbated in april that wants to come up because it wants to come out it wants you to you know like we got to be done with this like we can't we can't keep thinking this way we can't also also the other mistake the way this can be interpreted the astrology can be interpreted is that you make the mistake of involving someone that you're attracted to or a potential or even a long-term partner in your work life this is a mistake this month is about you it's about you and your money and your future and your goals and your dreams and it really doesn't have anything to do with love and romance around the 12th at the new moon and here's also you okay there's a lot that's hidden about you and about how you gauge your self-worth that really comes to the surface especially after mars moves into cancer but even at this new moon on the 12th you're starting to get this sense of like what's really holding me back is my opinion of myself and how i feel about me in relation to other people because also what happens is when you're with someone you feel super super great about you but you may not realize how that can make you very beholden to them because now they possess something that makes you feel good about you so then you're going to be willing even unconsciously to sacrifice quite some to keep getting that fix and 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 tolerate quite some mm. So it's not, you know, we want to, it's not really that much about romance. It's, it's, it's kind of dry when it comes to romance. It's, it's more about independence. It's about you, you know, being the boss of your own life and taking a hold of your good ideas and, and the things that your very inventive brain is coming up with and making something out of them without in any way being linked to a romantic partner you know collaborations with friends perfect you want to switch jobs you want to put your resume in here or there perfect your interviews inshallah will go smashingly but when it comes to love and mixing that with money things move slowly so slowly in fact that you may not see any real progress until the end of the month i mean this guy just loves taking his time but when it does come in it will be it will be because you have found your power i think now the universe is like enough pisces there's so many times when you're doing really really well and someone comes along romantically and you just lose all your power you just give it all away that now this will only this cup is only extended to you when you found that power within yourself and you realize like okay this is something that i never want to give away again and then 
Bottom of the deck is the Hierophant and the Six of Cups, echoing, I'm sorry, echoing that same message that your love life, your family life, your connection to others is only strengthened and bolstered when you fa focus on your economy, when you focus on your money. If you are dealing with a Taurus that you have a long-term relationship with, have kids with, wanna marry, this is a very good sign. However, I would not mix my business with them because they're just not where you are. And so what you're gonna end up doing is without realizing it, you're gonna end up alienating them. And this happens to Pisces a lot where you guys are just like being you, having good luck, doing what you do. Hi, Angel. Hello. And they take it really personally because they don't have that luck and they don't have that access. And then all of a sudden that becomes a competition where you never meant for it to be one. So here are the grapes, honey, take them. Do you want water? Okay. Love you. Love you. So you really want to be careful. Not that you want to be, you know, stepping on eggshells because of their fragile ego, but in a way, you know, their ego is fragile because it can, you, they can't help but compete. And you can't compete what you can't compare. And the way you work, especially in terms of money, especially when Mars moves into Cancer, the way you work is so based on this raw creative talent that you have, but also it's luck, you're lucky. And so it can be really difficult, especially for earth signs, where they are so stodgy in their belief system that, aside from Tauruses, but they, they can be so stodgy in their belief system that what you work for is what you get. And the way Pisceans work, it's like, no, what you are is what you get. And so, there, it can be, there's such a huge chasm between what you can accomplish and what they can accomplish. This is another reason that mixing romance and money is such a bad idea, especially in April, but generally as well. Okay. Those of you who are in a long-term couple, you're arguing about money, but you don't have to argue about money. You just need to figure out and come to some sort of an accord because... You know, if one of you is spending like crazy and the other one of you doesn't spend at all, you're both driving each other crazy because what fun is it to be around someone who doesn't spend at all? And what fun is it to be around someone who's spending like the world is about to end? Like you've got to come to some sort of happy middle. And that means that you've got to be open to that conversation. Don't go into that Pisces, like uber Pisces mode of being like, nobody tells me what to do ever. They're not trying to tell you what to do. They're just trying to look out for your finances. Okay? So spending habits. It's a conversation. Like I said, uh, changing jobs. If you would like to change jobs before the 19th, it's a really good idea to move on that. Get all your resumes in. You've got about two and a half weeks to do it. Queen of Pentacles and the Four of Wands. But you land on your feet, on your fins, whatever. Um, you find something that makes you feel really stable, makes you feel like, okay, this is something that I can do for a long time and it will provide stability to my life and it adds a lot to your finances. So the, the month ends very, very positive because all the things you're working on because you don't push them, because you're just putting in the effort and really leaving your romantic life alone, this magical thing happens where your creativity goes into overdrive or your luck goes into overdrive the things you want the job you want the the project you want to start it just starts to magically appear but we know it's not magically appearing it's like i said what you get is what you are and so pisceans are in april such magnets for abundance because this other aspect of their life is being put on hold and they're just not putting any energy to it so now what happens when you try to pursue your romantic life when astrologically it's just it's not yet you have to wait until the end of april so you can spend the whole month being miserable trying to force people to give you the reactions that you want them to have and therefore spoiling what would have worked out at the end of the month all by itself so don't do that as much as you may be prompted to, don't do that. If you've got any sort of an ailment that you can't figure out, see a doctor right away. 
if you've got any sort of extra money, do not spend it, save it, because at the end of the month, there could be unexpected expenses tied to this four of wands living situation or to your new job. Nothing major, but you won't be stressed out if you just spend April not spending. And I mean the things that you really don't need. You know, you don't need, like I was making them laugh on live the other day about like, I've never met a gray sweater I didn't like. I don't need another gray sweater and neither do you, right? So figure out what in your life is that is the gray sweater and don't do it. And notice that when you get stressed, your coping reaction is to spend money. Notice it, acknowledge it, and don't do it. It will leave you feeling empowered. It will leave you far richer, okay? And it will also teach you something about controlling your emotions. Another thing that I've said several times on live is to quote Warren Buffett, if you cannot control your emotions, you will never be able to control your money. So this is a great exercise for you to learn how to control your emotions when it comes to money, but in general as well, in general as well. So what is it about measuring value and how does that relate to independence? Because a lot of this reading has to do with independence and power. What is it about being with someone that makes you feel more powerful or stronger? And how can you create that feeling within yourself without having another person there to supply the gas, right? This is a lesson in independence, April is, for you. And it's so very easy to crumble under the pressure of it. Don't. There's nothing wrong with being independent. And as much as it may sting, you don't need anybody. You can want people, but you don't need anybody. Use April to show yourself that you don't need anybody. It'll be so good for you. And the last couple of months have been heading you in this direction anyway. And how wonderful will it be when you do get into a romantic situation and you don't need the person? A Piscean who doesn't need you is so attractive. No? That's you. Embrace it. Love it. Be it. Hi Pisces, welcome to your new moon reading. Woohoo! Okay, so you have the general, the first part, and now the second part is being done at the new moon. If you are wondering about the first part and how you could have seen it earlier because it was done 11 days ago, check out Patreon because it's been up for almost two weeks. Okay, now let's get into it. So. That 10 of wands and nine of pentacles says, and even the nine of wands says, hey, things are great. Work is good. Direction, right? Abundance, okay. But it's not the most exciting when it comes to love. You have that new moon there, also your card, and everything comes together today for you in terms of work direction, things that you want to do that maybe you're not even admitting to yourself, right? Things that are hidden from you about your own motivations, where you want to take your career, what the next step should be. This is all culminating. You've been mulling it over for about 10, 11 days. And today, tonight, you're like, oh, okay, this is what it is. This is the next direction I want to go in. Cool. Now, on the 23rd, Mars is going to come in and it doesn't actually make the romantic stuff any easier. It comes down to the nitty gritty for you this month. You know, if you are with someone, you guys are arguing about money or where you want to live next or if you want to travel. It seems that no matter how hard you try, when it comes to romance, you're just at odds. 
You know, so that's what I mean. It could be about really small stuff. It could be about big stuff. It can be ideological. So it can get real serious, right? It could come down to what religion we want to raise our child in, or should we be taking them to church? Should we be? It's all sorts of things that sound and begin small, like you're spending too much on this, or, but I want to move here, but I want to move here, starts off small and turns into huge complications. So how do you avoid this? Well, if you know, and this is going to make you laugh, but if you know there's something that you do that really gets on your partner's nerves, try not to throw it in there. Try not to spice up what's already going on by further annoying them. Not because you are obligated to, not because they deserve your kindness even, but if you really are wanting to solve things, it's not going to help. Okay? Really, that nine of wands and this new moon indication here is about reevaluating. Like, you need to take a look at what it is that you personally, you on your own, what do you bring to a collaboration? What do you bring to a relationship? What do you bring to a friendship? Past the charm, past the beauty. And for most of you, you know, anything on top of that is just an extra because of the world that we live in. In some ways, of course, it is very difficult for Pisces to live in the world, but in other ways, it's insanely easy because the things that we value more than anything now, you guys have them in spades. So if you were to look past that mythic beauty, if you were to look past this uh, allure that you have, not to belittle it at all, but if you were to look past it, what do you bring to the table? What do you bring to the table in terms of finance? What do you bring to the table in terms of ambition? What do you add to a relationship when it comes to power? Are you someone that another person could count on financially if they needed to, if they were down on their luck? Are you someone that they could count on to help them choose a new direction in their career? Are you someone they could take to a business dinner or to an office party even? Now, these questions would trigger almost nobody but you. And why? Because Pisceans know. They know that there are certain corners of life in which they tend not to fit so well. And these are the corners that this new moon wants you to look at. Not that you need to lose that childlike beauty or that innocence, but what do you concretely bring to the table when we're looking at the purely material world? The mystical world, like I said, the ephemeral, you have that. You got that. No one's questioning it. What about the rest? Okay, so what your response to this is going to be, well, I could sleep with my boss, Do not sleep with your boss. Do not sleep with your collaborators. Do not sleep with anyone that you, in fact, have a working relationship with. Why? Because it will lessen your money. It will ruin that relationship. It will ruin that job experience. And it will for sure ruin that collaboration. Because you're not serious about it. The only thing that mid-April to mid-May wants from you is to be serious. And it's the last thing you want to do. So you are so at odds with your astrology that it's actually kind of funny because the real question, if you're wondering, oh, what is this all about? The real question behind this is about how you measure your value. That's why some of the things that I've said so far have stung. Are you a person whose value comes from how many people want to sleep with them? How beautiful they are. How charming they are. How well-dressed they are. Are you someone who values the ability to persuade people to get them to do what you want them to do above everything else? Because April wants you to be better. 
sure, you can be persuasive, persuasive. That's not a crime. Of course, like I said, you have nine tenths of what people in this world want and what they use to get ahead. You already have it. So to you, this may seem like a moot point. Like this is a dumb question. What do you mean? What do I measure my worth by? I measure my worth by what everyone measures my worth by. And in that is the issue. Right? What we want ideally for you is that your worth be measured by who you are inside. And how that makes you behave outside. Now this is a little bit tricky. Because when you are by nature someone who is very attractive doesn't have to do a lot to persuade people to get what they want and do what they want. It does make for a slightly questionable person if you were to just look at their actions. That's what Aries season wanted you to clean up and that's what Taurus season is going to really go hard at. It, Taurus season is going to want you to learn from your mistakes and from your shortcomings, and from the areas of your life that you don't pay attention to. You see, for many of you, for many of us, it doesn't matter how that Ace of Cups appears as long as it appears when you want it to. And what Aries season and Taurus season are asking you is, yeah, but do you deserve it? Sure, you can make people give it to you, but do you deserve it? And to be able to answer that question, honestly, you're going to have to do a little reevaluating. Now, some of you are dealing with a Taurus, maybe even a Taurus that you have children with. And you have watched them blossom into quite an incredible person. Someone that you now would like to move living spaces with. Maybe move, maybe travel, maybe get a better place, bigger place, however you define it. And I think part of the reason that you've been able to hold on to that relationship is because you have watched them go from low to high to low to high, as, as Taurus has, and not judge them for it. So when the universe asks you, what do you measure your worth by? Those of you who have been in this Taurus situation can say, well, I measure my worth by the fact that I don't judge others based on their productivity because I understand that there's something more than that. Now, that's a great answer if that's what you've been doing. But if not, you got some explaining to do. Now, you may want to, under this really auspicious end of April energy, you may want to really branch out and do something different for yourself when it comes to quality of life. Even if you aren't with this person, you, you want a more, let's say, opulent, uh, but not even taking it that far, maybe just a prettier living environment. And although you may want to spend quite a considerable amount of money on it, you shouldn't. One, because you need to go see a doctor if there's anything that's been bothering you. Two, at the very end of April, there will be some expenses that you didn't count on. They don't have to be very big expenses, but there will be some expenses. And from about the 14th to the 19th, you feel a pulling away by maybe your friends, maybe a potential love interest. And to soothe yourself, because you will take it personally, to soothe yourself, you may want to spend and do some retail therapy, don't. For those of you who have kids, if you feel like, you know, they're constantly getting sick or something's going on, take them to the doctor. Spend that money on alleviating those nagging fears you have instead of spending it on buying something material to make yourself feel better in the moment. One, because it won't help. Two, it's wasteful. And three, it sends absolutely the wrong message to the universe. Because I said, those expenses don't have to be too big at the end of the month because you're saving. Now, if you're saving, the message you're sending to the universe is, I'm prepared. So you've already learned half the lesson of whatever that expense was supposed to teach you. Do you understand? It's not just about 
hoard your money just in case. No, it's sending the right signal. The signal being, okay, well, I don't have as much as I want to. I'm saving it up just in case, right? Something goes on. And then the universe says, oh, oh, so you are thinking in term, you are thinking more maturely. You are thinking outside of just your wants and needs. Well, that was going to be the point of that expense anyway. Okay, so you can head that off at the pass if you would like to. Now, there are some of you who are thinking, Ugh, you know, every month you're telling me, don't do this, don't do this, don't do this. Okay, well, here's something you can do. Before the 19th, if you would like to take your career in a different direction, do it now. You have about a week. If you would like to leave your job, you have about a week to leave it. Start looking for a new one. By the time you get into tourist season, you'll find something you really like, somewhere where you feel like you're at home. Okay? For those of you who have this sort of uh, burgeoning connection with someone, do not pursue it until we're into the middle end of, April, uh, end of May. Why? Because everyone you know needs a little bit of space and especially the type of people you're attracted to. And whenever they try to take that space, you're going to take it personal. And then instead of being the cool, mysterious, beautiful person that you are, you're going to come off as clingy and insecure, which is not the case. So don't do it. Okay. Good. There is such a high chance of recovery if something small is bothering you, which is why I urge you to get it checked out. Because there is, at the end of April, this really regenerative energy coming in for you. Healing, understanding of self, forgiveness of self, forgiveness of others. So it's important to tap into that when it comes to your physical body, but also to your emotions. Start today at the new moon. You know, set those intentions for yourself. I want to bring more to the table. And if you don't want to put it that way, because the implication is that you don't bring enough, I would like to bring this and this and this and this to the table in any interaction that I have. And you'll see that becoming aware of this can bring you so much freedom and so much happiness. Oftentimes, I find that Pisceans cannot be bothered to be told what they're lacking. And it's a shame. It's a shame because I don't know how you learn then. If you're sensitive, I don't know how you learn. So don't make that Leo mistake of not being able to take criticism because it will keep you stuck. Right? And if the name of the game is evolution, then you have to be strong enough to hear this is lacking. That is like without, without making it your, making your world crumble, right? There is some medium, happy medium between being aggressively offended and having your world fall apart because you may not be perfect because nobody's perfect right? The happy medium between the two is, all right, well, nobody's perfect. So I'm not going to be too offended that you don't think I'm perfect. And maybe there is a kernel of truth to what you're saying, because I do myself know intuitively that I, you know, could work on this and that. So instead of getting mad at you for being as perceptive as I am and being able to see it and eat without being mad at you for then having the gall to point it out to me, I'll just take that and not take it as an L, but I'll just take that criticism and I'll glean what I can from it and move along and improve and evolve because most times in the next few weeks when someone mentions something like that to you if you process it properly you will gain some nugget of knowledge that will help you financially or in your business or the business you should be starting already okay now if you're wondering what I mean business you should be starting already, regardless of what you do for a living. It is absolutely necessary if you work for somebody else for you to start your own thing. Start with $5. Start with buying a domain name. 
Don't judge yourself for where you start. Just start. And why, you ask? Because. Because in 10 years, you could be financially independent if you wanted to be. Why is that important? It's important for your soul. It's important long-term for you to have something that gives you a way out of being beholden to somebody else. But that's more financial freedom talk and we'll talk about that more on our ZA walks. If you're wondering what a ZA walk is, every other day we get together on Instagram and we walk together. It's a walking meditation. We visualize together. It's very healing. It's very interactive. It's super fun. You can find those ZA walks on Patreon. And if you would like to view the early part of this reading, when it first is done, this part, and as well as the extended, there's an option for that on Patreon as well. You can subscribe to the Pisces tier or the Pisces plus the ZA tier, which gives you, like I said, early part one, early part two, extended, and all the ZA walks. Now, if you're interested in a personal reading, there's a cameo link below. And if you were taking a look at these gorgeous rings, this is the world, which just dropped. I'm actually going to put the link out later tonight, but if you come join the walk in a couple of hours at Amber Khan on Instagram, I will be dropping that link there, but it's a limited link. It's a limited release until May. Okay. One last thing. If you are interested in a look at the daily astrological transits and how they apply to your sun, moon, and rising, come on over to at the quietest revolution on Insta and have a look at your daily horoscope. It's super fun. Come join the Rev fam. I love you, love you, love you. Happy new moon. I love doing your readings by the moon. I think you know this. And I also think it's one of the only days where you let me get away with tapping into your energy without, you know, being a shark about it. So uh, thank you for that. Ah, one more thing. Also available on the Revolution Rings platform is this beautiful bracelet and this uh, earring that's meant to be worn single that can be threaded through multiple piercings if you have them. All right, and this is part of the Nazar collection. All right, fam. Love you, love you. I'll see you in the extended right now. Bye.